Today we're going to discuss some clinical cases that uh, are challenging when dealing with the dental dam. Uh, orthodontic case isolation, we will be discussing using the dental dam. Brackets that are already and braces that are already on a patient. Uh, you may use a traditional isolation or a general field isolation. As you can see in the slide, uh, it, there's been somewhat of a, a ligation process that's used around the uh, bracket. However, the general field isolation would be much easier technique to use. When uh, isolating around existing brackets and, and um, your wire brackets, um, I recommend using uh, the non-latex frame flexidam. Uh, it has the integrated frame, which makes it much easier to work on the patient. So when you're punching this for a two-hole technique, you make two holes and you're going to cut a slit between the two holes. Some people call this the split dam technique. And so this is stretched from um, end to end and then uh, you can secure uh, the uh, dental dam in place as shown in the slide uh, where the dental dam is, is secured in, in place. What happens there is a, a string a floss ligation uh, is placed uh, into the uh, the wire and held in place. There is a, a, a two by two where holes were punctured and the floss is threaded through to uh, cover the opening that occurs from the two hole ligation. If you are doing bracket bonding techniques, uh, the 10 hole general field isolation will expedite the process of your bracket bonding procedures. Uh, as shown in the slide, the dam is placed on the frame and 10 holes are punched and wing clamps are inserted in the dam. Both clamps are seated first and the dam is then secured around each canine. The dam is stretched off the wings of each clamp and floss is used to place the interceptal dam on the mesial of each molar and on the mesial and distal of each canine. The dam is inverted on the buccal and lingual uh, at the location of the slits. You have your holes for your anchor teeth and then you're going to have mesial dam. So we're going to place two more holes in front of your anchor teeth. Then we're going to have a hole for your canines. Now I mentioned that there's dam on either side of the canine. So we're going to put another hole here, another hole here, one hole here, and one hole here. And what you're going to do is if you're using the dam with the frame, what you're going to do next is while the dam is on the frame, you can punch your holes for the anchor tooth. You're going to punch the holes that you marked in front of the anchor tooth. Now for your canines, you're going to punch a little smaller hole. You're going to punch the number three hole on your punch, just like that. And then now you've got another hole on either side of your canine. So you're going to punch these like this and then you're ready to make your slits. So you're going to make your slit between each of these holes. The distal of the canine hole, make a slit and then you're going to make a slit on the holes that are on the mesial aspect but you see you still have interceptal dam. There's your canine. It's going to go here. All right, so when you go to your patient, this is what it's going to look like. You need to place the clamps into the dental dam first. And I've ligated my clamp. It's always a good idea to put a safety floss on your clamp in case your clamp becomes dislodged. Engaging the floss through both holes is advisable. This way you can retrieve the entire clamp if in the event the clamp should break into two pieces, which can happen, but not so commonly does it happen, but it can happen. Okay, and so now we're ready to go to the mouth. We're going to seat our clamps first.
then we can stretch the dam off the wings at this point. Making sure to use the side of the instrument. On the wing one, we could just stretch it on off the wing from from with our finger. And we're gonna come over here and stretch the uh, the dam off of this wing. Okay. And using our index finger to stretch the dam off the lingual aspect. Okay, so next we're going to proceed to our canine. And we're going to apply the dam interproximally using some wax dental floss. Using my loop technique, as I'm getting the interproximal dental dam through the contact, making sure not to bunch it, but just simply carrying an edge through first until the entire interproximal dam is between the teeth. Okay, now what we want to do is pass the dam in the interproximal region on the mesial of the molars. There we go. Now, the next step is to roll under the dental dam. And you're going to roll it under on both the buccal and the lingual area to help seal it. You can use some oral seal dental dam caulking if you'd like to also uh, get a seal. This will help with some moisture control. So basically, again, you want to roll the dam under. Sort of like an inversion process. Now, if, you're, if your dental dam's not thoroughly between the teeth, you might have a little bit of an issue trying to get the dam to roll under. So I'll, I'll go back and double check and make sure that I have all the material thoroughly down through the contacts. And now this should invert a little bit more readily. Here we go. And there you go. So that does provide some protection uh, of the lips, tongue, and cheeks, and it does give you some access. Uh, well, it gives you a lot of access to the area, but but uh, in terms of the um, the quality of the isolation for uh, saliva, you can. Uh, as I mentioned, use the oral seal dental dam caulking and that should seal the areas and you should be able to get uh, adequate isolation and certainly expedite your placement of your brackets. You don't have to worry about dropping them and yeah, it's just like any small items. You know. Exactly. It pro protects the patient's oral cavity uh, and from inhal inhalation or swallowing of any foreign object. 